Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good morning to everyone. Today, we are going to talk about student alcohol consumption analysis. Before we go on, let me introduce you to our team members. I myself is a data analyst, Nuru Izzat Lenda Minti Rohaisat. And with me, I have three other people. Siti Aumni Binti Amaram, who is the project manager. Siti Marian Zamira Binti Khairuddin, who is the data scientist. Putri Nurul Shazwani Adil binti Mak Sabri, who is the data engineer. This is a Power BI dashboard interface. So all the buttons, all the visualizations are created by the Power BI tools. As you can see in this homepage, there are four buttons which is created about us analysis summary and analysis finding. So each of the button will direct to a certain page. Okay. Same goes for analysis summary and analysis finding. There's all the, let's see, let's go here, all the buttons here, all the buttons here are working just fine. So a button will go directly to the each page. And then, for example, if we go to analysis summary, this shows the overall um, summary, uh, vis the visualization of all what we're trying to find. And then uh, and the, the dashboard is also, um, the visualization is interactive. So as you can see, if I put my cursor here, the, there'll be a pop-up that say how many students have uh, specific information of the each category. Same goes for um, other visualiz visualization. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. And also the user can also um, select uh, between the type of alcohol level they want to see. So if they want to see the analysis for only high, they will show all how high uh, alcohol consumption for high, there are 173 say that um, the health status is good and 38 students say it was bad. Same goes for low and normal. And if we, they select all, it shows the overall view of all high, low and normal alcohol consumption. And next is analysis finding. Analysis finding, we created it, um, five uh, sets of buttons. Each button uh, complies to the uh, research uh, question of our project. And then uh, each uh, page of each button will provide the question, the research question. And over here is the graph that, uh, that we set. And uh, down here is a below a brief explanation of the chart. Let's move on to the introduction of our project. In non-Muslim countries, drinking alcohol is a common practice in some cultures. Countries like Portugal have lower drinking age requirements and drinking is considered a pastime. However, some teenagers have gave in to their desires and drink below the required age. According to the World Health Organization WHO, alcohol is a psychoactive substance that can cause harm to the human body. Drinking alcohol can cause disorders such as drinking alcohol can cause hallucinations, mental disorders, lack of coordination, vision problems, loss of balance, and etc. Prolonged alcohol consumption can be detrimental to the human body. Thus, could seriously cause serious health issues such as high blood pressure, stroke, liver disease, and digestive problems. The previous study of student alcohol consumption has claimed that prolonged drinking can have an impact can can have an impact on their biological development as well as academic performance and behavior. Moreover, some studies focus on the demographic, behavioral, and psychological factors play an important role in student alcohol consumption. So, what is our problem right now? The problem statement right now is that students and parents are not aware of the relationship between students' alcohol consumption and performance. Proof rate of alcohol has increased in the last decade. More consumption means that student health is at risk. The National Survey on Drug Use and Health found that the rates of alcohol consumption between the age of 12 to 17 years old has increased and the average grade point has decreased. Early drinking could have an adverse effect on health in the future causing problems like fatty liver disease and type 2 diabetes. Alcohol has a high sugar and calorie content, which may also cause obesity. As a result, students may become alcoholics. We seek to raise awareness about this issue by understanding the potential factors that may cause the student to drink alcohol. So we have three objectives for this project. Uh, 
it is to collect data on alcohol consumption among students to develop a dashboard that can visualize and interpret the analysis of student alcohol consumption to analyze the data and identify the potential factors that contribute to student drinking alcohol moving on to the project scope with the data of student alcohol consumption from kego we use the we use the data set to visualize the pattern and determine the potential factors that cause the student to drink alcohol and how it correlates to the student's academic performance and health so we have a few research questions the first is what is the student's alcohol consumption does alcohol consumption affect the student's health how does alcohol consumption affect student grades does alcohol outing associate with alcohol consumption and also does parent cohabitation status affect the student's grade with this i would like to give the presentation to the next presenter which is out me Okay, next, um, to visualize our data, we choose uh, five types of charts that we think is uh, the most appropriate to represent our data, which is uh, first we choose pie chart, and then we choose ribbon chart, then we choose uh, bubble chart, then this is uh, tree map, and lastly we use tensor parallel slicer. The first research question is what is the student alcohol consumption? So to answer this question, we use pie chart. So this type of graph displays data in a circular graph. So each portion of the graph is proportional to the fraction of the whole in each category. In other words, um, each slice of the pie is relatively to the size of the category in, in the group as a whole. So the pie chart above shows the level of alcohol consumption among students. So the pie clearly shows that the number of the students who have low level of, of alcohol consumption is the largest portion compared to other levels. The result shows that the largest portion from the pie, which I was emphasized in low blue shade, was low alcohol intake, which was 60.63%, and the smallest portion was normal alcohol intake, which was 19.16%. However, there is not much difference between normal alcohol intake and high alcohol intakes. This shows that the normal and high levels of uh, alcohol intakes uh, have some sort of uh, correlation between them. Overall, this data set shows that uh, the majority of students are low level of alcohol consumption. The second research question is, does alcohol consumption affect students' health? So we use the ribbon chart to show the relationship between the student's health status and alcohol consumption level of the students. So the ribbon chart can show which data category has the highest value of the rank changes, uh, and the rank changes can be shown and the category with the highest value will always be displayed at the top of each time period. So um, out of 1,044 students, 784 students have a good health and 260 students have bad health. On low level alcohol consumption, 467 uh, students have a good health condition, while 166 students have bad health condition. On normal aqua consumption level, 144 students have a good health condition and 56 students have bad health condition. On the other hand, 173 students have good health condition on high level consumption uh, and 38 students have bad health condition. So based on the result, we can conclude that the students with a normal alcohol consumption level have the most uh, students with bad health condition, since only 144 students are on the normal level of alcohol consumption, but 56 of the students have bad health condition. So overall, even though the number of students with good health condition is more than the students with bad health condition, it is still not good result be, uh, since the number of students who have a bad health condition is 260 students out of 1044, which means around 95% of the students do not have a good health condition. So um, this shows that the alcohol consumption has uh, effects on the student's health since, uh, since continuous alcohol consumption can lead to the development of chronic illness. So every student and parent should be aware of the danger of alcohol consumption effects on the student's health. Next is the third research question, which is how does the alcohol consumption affect student's grades? To answer this question, we use a tree map chart to represent information. This type of chart is chosen because it helps to visualize the hierarchical view and make it easier to detect the pattern of the data. From the TMAC chart shown, we can see that the majority of the students 
which is a total of 509 students have low alcohol consumption, uh, which they pass their subjects and only a total of 124 failed the subjects. The light blue color represents the data for high alcohol consumption with a total of 211 students. Only 153 students pass the subjects, while only 58 students fail. Lastly, the yellow color shows 152 students pass the subjects while having normal level of alcohol consumption. While only 48 students who have normal levels of alcohol consumption fail the subjects. It can be concluded that the students who have the lowest level of alcohol consumption obtain the highest passing grades. On the contrary, students with normal level of alcohol consumption have both the lowest number of students that fail and pass the subjects. Uh, the fourth research question is, does a student outing associate with alcohol consumption? To answer this question, we use Tessel Parallel Set Slicer Graph. The reason we choose this graph because this graph can visualize in multi-categorical data, which is the most suitable graph to visualize our data. So there are three categories of alcohol level, which are low, normal, and high, which are displayed at the top of the graph. The next categorical value is the student outing, which, which is divided into two categories, which are often and rarely. The graph emphasizes the differences uh, in categorical values in different shades of color. From the graph, we can see that uh, low alcohol consumption and student outing often have uh, the largest section in the graph. However, there is not much difference between the portion size of high and normal alcohol intakes. But by looking at the student outing, uh, those who often go out consume less alcohol compared to those who drink more. Then those who rarely go out also consume less alcohol. However, uh, there are still some students who drink more alcohol when they often go out with their friends. This shows that there is, uh, there is a correlation between students going out and levels of alcohol consumption. Therefore, parents also need to be aware of their children when going out with their friends because it might lead them to drink more alcohol than they should have. Okay, next we go on to the last research question, which, uh, which is, does parents' cohabitation status affect the student's grade? To answer this question, we use bubble chart to show the student's grade based on the parents' cohabitation status. Since the bubble chart can make it easier to make the compar uh, comparison between the data, since the bubble size depends on the size of the data. Okay, based on the bubble chart, a total of 121 students had the parents living apart and 923 students had their parents living together. The research shows that 23 students out of 121 students failed at the finals for the parents who live apart. However, when the parents live together, a total of 200 and seven out of 923 students failed in their examination. The result shows that when the parents are living together, the number of students who failed in their final examination is more than the students whose parents uh, parents living apart from each other. However, overall, the students with the parents who live apart are better because the failure rate is less than the parents who live together. This shows uh, this shows that the parents' cohabitation status does not really affect the grades of the students. Overall, this is the compilation of all the graphs and charts from the analysis and finding sessions. This visualization is an interactive and can be changed based on the alcohol level. Based on the result, most of the students are on a low level of alcohol consumption. Furthermore, the student with the lowest level of alcohol consumption obtain the highest passing grades, and students with normal low level of alcohol consumption have the lowest number of students that fail. Alcohol also affects the student health, and there is a correlation between students going up and level of alcohol consumption. Lastly, the results shows that Parents' cohabitation status of the students does not really affect the student grades. Okay, that's all. Thank you.